Welcome back to the Chamber Matters. I'm Regina Montgomery. Um, before the break, we were speaking with Teresa Soren from Dufferin.biz, and we were talking about what they've been doing and the survey that they conducted. Um, and now I'm joined by John Teffler, who is the CAO and town clerk with the town of Shelburne. Thank you for joining me today, John. Well, thank you for having me aboard. So let's talk a little bit about, we've been talking, obviously our topic is live here, buy here, and Shelburne, obviously that's very important to your community as well. So talk about the businesses in Shelburne and uh, why it is important in Shelburne. Well, as you know, Shelburne is a growing community, and, and particularly now we're exceeding our mm -hmm. uh, growth patterns um, significantly. And uh, we are at a point, a crossroads right, right, right now, where our retail is um, under a microscope, and we are reviewing what needs to be done. So the town has become a tremendous partner as far as coordinating and providing resources to partner with our BI friends and uh, the Chamber, the Dufferin.biz, Hills of Headwaters. Uh, Orangeville Small Business Enterprise, and what we're trying to do is be part of the action and make sure we make constructive decisions for the future that will benefit all the businesses. Our ultimate goal is to make sure each and every business is vibrant in the community mm -hmm. and make sure each one of them have their own character and that uniqueness that comes out uh, and makes them a repeat business for every customer. So now, what are some of the things that you're hearing, whether it's from business owners or from your residents? What do you hear? Well, I think with this particular campaign, um, I think it, the county now looks at things more of exclusive as now gone and more, more inclusive. So we're starting to promote things as a regional um, concept, and I think that's important. Um, every community has its own character, but at the end of the day, I think it's a bigger bang for the buck if we can have um, a region working together and promoting what each of our uh, small villages, towns, and hamlets are all about. And when we look at some of the, the uh, data they collect at Dufferin.biz, I mean, when we look at some of the shopping habits, if they're going 30 minutes to the south, which is Brampton, if you live in Orangeville, why wouldn't you go, say, 20 minutes to the north to Shelburne? So I can see how that collaboration is very important to work together. Um, it's not just about one municipality. It's obviously about a bunch of them working together. Right. And the, and the bigger point for us is the fact that a lot of our residents actually commute to Brampton and therefore our um, ultimate goal is to get them to shop once they arrive home rather than on the way home. So we've been known as a bedroom community for many years and we're trying to make it a destination stop for retail as well as the cottage traffic they're traveling through. We have about 7 million cars that travel through oh, wow. one intersection in Shelburne. And I mean, it's important to try to attract that industry as well, but at the end of the day, I think our residents have to su support the local business as well. Now, how are you conveying the message, though? How are you getting people to buy into it, whether it's the businesses or or the residents? How do you do that? Well, we've worked very close with BIA. Make sure we have a consultation at least once a month. We also have our Shelburne District uh, Economic Development Committee that works very closely with the BIA and with Town Council. And we want to make sure that everybody's in inclusive of, of our group and make sure they understand what the campaign's all about. So one of the key points that has to be each of them have stickers on their doors when you go in, which is important, but also it's important to ask the customer, how did you hear about this campaign? Do you know about the campaign? Where did you hear about it? So those are the kind of things that we want the feedback on and so that the campaign can, can, can gain from that. Okay, well we're going to take a look at one of the businesses in uh, Shelburne called Jellycraft, so let's take a look at that uh, story. The name, the Jelly Crab Bakery, I'm not from Sherba, I'm not from Canada, I'm just from Poland. And I don't know nothing about this town, no gossip is. <laughs> and my neighbor, her father, he was a principal in school, it's a Dan Stewart, he's from Sherba, he knows everything about the Sherba. And we call him and ask him, what would be the name for my store? To Shelburne, and what the stores we have? They sell bakery, cafe, some gifts, crafts. He said, "Okay, give me five minutes." Five minutes passed. He called and said, "What about Jelly Crab Bakery?" I said, "Jelly Crab Bakery? What is a crazy name?" And we opened this place, and it's 12 years past, and they're still here, and I'm so happy. <laughs> and I think people enjoy. So many people coming and thank you. You know, say the thank you to be open to. Give them a little like we have a different groups coming. We have a Wednesday's uh, men group where they're coming in the morning for coffee and some sweet. We have a ladies' uh, tea afternoon, they're coming almost every second day. Sometimes it's every day, and they spend some time here. Like it's every time, it's a different people coming, and this is it's really nice. Like I say, like I never finished school, baking school. I just get the experience from my dad. He was baking bread for us when we grow up. He's showing us. 
I don't have a big hands. My hands are small, but my dad have a big, big hands. When he came to visit us, I didn't have a, a place yet, but he baked bread every day for, for the boys, with Adam and Paul. He's showing them how to roll the buns. So now, actually, bread, I don't bring the bread myself. My friend, he's coming and like, preparing the bread for me, and we're just baking fresh. Every day, different bread, very people love. It's very, it's a nacho. No, no sugar in it, no, very less sugar. The salt just for yeast to grow up, but not like, you know, too, too much salt. And uh, cakes I learned from my mom. And after just take from Patricia, she's in the orange, I don't know if she's still on the business, some little courses, how to make the flowers. And from the books, reading the books, uh, watching the TV, <laughs> and seeing like I like my ideas when I'm doing the wedding cakes. I, I wanted to, the different, not from the books, you know, something what nobody can have it. But every lady, when you're going to the party or something, you want to have a, a dress which nobody have it. <laughs> so I think the married people, they want to have a cake when nobody have it. The same, you know, the plate look different, like in different restaurants, like something different. Winter time, we're buying from the fresh so much, but same with buying from Mennonites people, the growing natural product. Like squash, with every soup is cooked with a squash, we buy like bushes, bushes cut, bake them in the oven and put in the freezer for whole, whole winter, and beets and carrots, potatoes. This is its local people, natural growing product. And leathers it's very hard to buy from local people that we got buying from the fresh, Sherman Fresh, but this is, the business is local business, so we give them, you know, opportunity to grow up and have it. And uh, what else we buying? We try to buy the milk, but very hard to buy the milk for local because they don't have it. Uh, cream, just the milk, and we need the cream. We need a different product too. That's a, so we're still buying from uh, dairy, yes, like from dairy distributor. And <laughs> I can say, and same we have the uh, gems, local gems, uh, local jellies, you know which we're selling here. Oh, the coffee, the very important, we have a local uh, roasted coffee, which is in a berry, it's not so far. And every two weeks we have a fresh coffee roasted and bring just for us and different flavors, different, it's a nice, people like it. We never get a harbor from the fresh coffee. What does a John mean? John mean be with the people. Like I say, I don't want to be a baker, I, I, I was teaching fun, but any time my dream was to be with people. And here is, I'm with people, I know the secrets, <laughs> I know who die, I know who get married, who have a baby in this town. This is enjoy, this is enjoy to see the people happy, to coming every day, sharing story with us. It's look like, a, you know, Sher and the Shelburne, Shelburne is really, I'm happy I moved from Toronto to Shelburne because it's really, really nice town, really nice town. and. They have a stuff like that, which I have it. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Take me 12 years, but now I have a really good people to working with me. Everybody have a big smile. So she talks about how she makes it a conscientious effort to buy things local from her jams to her honeys and even her products. She buys local squash and local fruits as much as she can. So, um, you know, an obvious uh, business that is really buying into or has supported the Live Here, Buy Here idea. Well, Jellycraft is a prime example of a, of, of a, a small store that's grown with the community and she values her customers and uh, the customers value her product and it's very evident and she was very deserving of the award. Yeah, she won our hospitality award with the Chamber. Um, let's talk a little bit about what um, Shelburne, the town of Shelburne has done in the past to help support local business. Well, two key key points I maybe bring up. Um, our work with o, the OMAFRA um, has allowed us an opportunity to do a BR&E, which is a business retention and expansion program. And what we do is we go into each business and look at it from two aspects. One, from the inside, make sure each business is financially healthy and that they, if they need assistance with their business plans and future uh, forecasting, we have people that can assist them with that resource. The second half is we were able to provide a facade program, which basically looks at your storefront. And if you want to do improvements to your storefront to make the customer think you're more appealing, um, we had a grant was 50 cents on the dollar that we provided to those that applied for it. So those two aspects, I think, is something, where, again, where we used some resources and partnered with each and every business that was um, 
willing to take on the, um, the program. And one of the things we talked about earlier when Pete was here was about the price. Like sometimes people think, you know, they can find something, and even online shopping has been a huge driver of this as well, where you think you can find something online and then you order it. And if it's coming from the United States, you're pay paying, you know, your duties and taxes. And then by the time you're done, what was maybe $5 now costs $25 and you could have got down the street for 10 So, you know, talk a little bit about the pricing. Well, I mean, yes, you can go into the big box stores, you can go in and buy online and that, but I mean, there's no service or dedication to the customer, in my opinion. Um, you have to look at these small businesses. They are the generator of a lot of the jobs that are created in small town in Ontario. Uh, secondly, they are reinvesting in the quality of life. What I mean by that is they are the ones that are making donations to your charities, they're the ones that are making donations to your programs in your town, and also they become some of those people that are on your service clubs. Last but not mm -hmm. least, a lot of these small business owners are your neighbors and they're your personal friends. So I don't think you can match that by buying online. And when we look at the story we just saw about Jellycraft and how she knows everyone, I think that speaks for itself about the live here, buy here. It, it would be lovely just to be able to go into a store and somebody knows you by name, right? You're not just exactly. a number or a customer. So maybe just quickly, the future of, Shel of Shelburne, what sort of do you foresee is going to happen in the next few years there? Well, um, several people have told me that uh, Shelburne's at the point where Orangeville used to be at, and it's about to take that next step in the retail, and I think Big Box is, is on the radar. It is going to happen. At the same time, I think we're, we have a unique downtown that needs to be protected, and I think uh, niche shopping and the quality of, of the product that's provided downtown will complement what is going to come from the Big Box. I don't, I don't see there's going to be um, 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 a severe problem as far as uh, competing interests, I think it's going to be complementing the interests. Okay, well thank you so much John for speaking with us today and when we return we're going to take a look at the town of Orangeville, so don't go away.